to uh, kind of um, be in connection with students all over the world. And um, I've been working as director of the English Language Institute here in New York City for uh, quite a while. And uh, I'm in charge of the academics and also the recruitment of students not only for the English uh, program we have here uh, in our university, but also for students interested in applying to our, our, our college, our majors for undergraduate and graduate programs. So not only uh, English, but also bachelor's, master's, and um, PhDs that we have here at the College of Staten Island. Um, so, so thanks again, if somebody's interested, um, in coming to New York City, well, of course, not now with this problem, but uh, maybe in the future, uh, I really suggest considering uh, coming to Staten Island. And uh, I'll, I'll show you um, where Staten Island is, but it's part of the New York City, uh, the five boroughs of New York City. And it's probably the, the most uh, affordable area. In, in New York. New York, it's very expensive. And uh, so being a student in Staten Island, instead of studying and living in Manhattan, for example, uh, that will be very expensive. So, um, and in our program, uh, we have a TOEFL course. Uh, and so we prepare students not only uh, for learning English, but also to be prepared for this test because um, it's part of the um, admissions requirement and not only for undergraduate but also for uh, graduate programs and not only for our school but also for, for other CUNY schools uh, that take uh, TOEFL as a requirement. So um, just let me, um, I don't know if you could give me permission to uh, screen share uh, my presentation. Uh, so, um, because it, it, you, will, you will find some um, information about TOEFL, uh, that it's part of the requirement. So, it's very important that you know what kind of TOEFL test you can, you can take. Um, so, so, let me see. I, have made, you, uh, I have made you now a co-host and you should be your screen. Should be, okay, perfect. It, it's, it's fine. Um, <clears throat> So I think you see it now, right? Let me see. But there we go. So this is this is us, the College of Staten Island. Uh, when I first came, I couldn't pronounce the name. It's not English. It's Dutch, and, and it's because the Dutch people were the first ones coming to New York before British. Uh, so they left. They left the Dutch word. Uh, here, even Manhattan. Manhattan is it's a Dutch word. So, um, so this is the name of uh, of the school, which belongs to the public system of universities in the city. So today we're going to talk about TOEFL. Uh, I'm sure you have seen this logo before. It's part of um, it's part of the requirements for many universities in the U.S. and other countries. So uh, this is a, one of the most maybe I would dare to say one of the most important tests of English around the world. So this is where, where we are in the, the orange area and uh, close to Brooklyn, close to Manhattan, which is the most tourist area in New York City and in front of New Jersey. So this is a very uh, affordable area, very quiet, probably the, the greenest area in the city. And over here, the students get ready for TOEFL and uh, then they can just study their major anywhere around. This is our college. This is as I said, very green area. Uh, it's the, probably the CUNY largest, uh, largest CUNY campus in the city. And this is where our classes take place. So, um, so the TOEFL, just for, for the first ones, the first students that may have never heard about the TOEFL, this is what it means, right? The acronym of TOEFL is the test of English as a foreign language. And um, so it's an international English test. It's not only for a school, it's not only for uh, admission to a university, but also many governments take that as training. Uh, uh, many companies take TOEFL um, for their staff. But yes, it's especially for school admission, right? What I mean, when I, when I mean school, I mean 
uh, college, community college, and uh, university, so you, you, you name it. So um, this, is, this test is, is taken worldwide in authorized centers. I'm sure in Bosnia there must be at least one authorized TOEFL center. Um, so it's, it's everywhere, it's, it's in every country. So if you don't take it in your home country, you can come to the U.S., take an English program like us, and take the TOEFL test with us and apply to a CUNY major. So there are, there's always that option, right? If you don't want to take it home. So this is what TOEFL is about. The first thing you have to, you have to decide is what kind of TOEFL test you need to take. So there are more than 20 types of TOEFL tests which I wouldn't say TOEFL, it's, it's the company ETS, the company that manages uh, different tests. And TOEFL is just probably uh, three or four TOEFL tests they manage, and be, but they have more different types of tests, including GRE, which is when you want to apply for a master's program. Uh, they manage the GRE, which is uh, for a master's degree, for a PhD, universities, especially U.S. universities, ask for a GRE. Even uh, the, the SAT or the SAT test, ETS also works with SAT, which for the ones that go for an undergraduate. But, but ETS manages, <clears throat> manages more than 20 types of tests, different types for, for kids, uh, for adults, and uh, for different purposes. So I'm just going to focus <clears throat> on the first two which is the TOEFL IBT, which means internet-based test, and the ITP, which is exactly the same, except for the writing part. It's exactly the same test. There's no difference. <clears throat> and which is the institutional test. And it's usually uh, used uh, for some schools like, like us, uh, just for internal use, but also for admission or for a placement test. Okay, but then again, sometimes they are the same readings, they are the same grammar questions, they are the same listening um, conversations you may hear. So it's pretty much, pretty much the same. The, uh, maybe the TOEFL IBT is the one that is used in the authorized centers around the world. That's the one used. And uh, there's an option also the computer-based. So if you want to take um, the, the internet-based or the computer-based, which is not internet-based, is in some countries they may not have internet or Wi-Fi connection. They may take just a computer base if they just have a computer with it. So, <clears throat> and uh, basically TOEFL um, evaluates your writing skills, reading skills, listening, and speaking when you take the TOEFL IBT, right, for the conversation part. So you have the passive and the active skills, and I would suggest you have you have an upper intermediate level or an advanced level to take the test. If you have a lower intermediate test, you may not reach the score you need to apply for a U.S. university. Maybe you are, maybe you're lucky and you prepare and you get ready. Yeah, if you study, yeah, you can do it. But, uh, but I would suggest upper intermediate level and advanced students to take the TOEFL test if they are gonna really apply to a, a U.S. Uh, school. Um, we usually take students uh, in a beginner level, in a lower intermediate level, and they get, they get a pretty decent, very close to what we need uh, to apply to a CUNY school, but they usually take six more months to get ready. So if you have a beginner or intermediate level, you may need uh, 18 hours per week to get ready on, in TOEFL. Um, maybe less, but that would be a good number to get ready at least for four to six months to to get the score. Now, what kind of score we're talking about? This this part <clears throat> in the structure of the test, you have to be ready for this um, because the listening part has 50 questions and it's, and it's always, if not usually, the first part of the test. And the test uh, of listening right now with coronavirus, TOEFL has switched to online. Uh, test, whatever it was written, because there's also a written version. The TOEFL ITP, for example, was written, it, but now it's digital. <clears throat> and what do you have to be careful about listening? When it's online, uh, 
it gives you only 12 seconds per question to answer. So you have to be ready, especially because it's the first part of the test. And uh, sometimes when we start the test, we are not fully concentrated. And a lot of the students may not hear the first or the second question until they focus and do not get distracted. So be very careful because TOEFL starts with listening and has only 12 seconds per question. And you're going to have 50 questions. So you have to be ready from the very beginning. And then you have what the students call grammar questions, but TOEFL calls it structure and written expression. Uh, and it's not grammar only, um, because it also evaluates syntax, uh, it evaluates vocabulary, um, but, but of, course, uh, of course grammar. But it's not grammar um, by itself, okay? Uh, and again, those are, uh, it's very quickly, 40 questions. And then the reading part, um, you have to be ready for the difficult topics. Which topics do, do they all usually come? Um, biology, dinosaurs, about the space, about chemistry, uh, about engineering, about transportation and history. So those are usually the topics that come. So if you're familiar, familiar with, the, with, the, with the topics, you may find a lot of technical vocabulary where you're gonna be, uh, you're gonna know the words and you may know, you may understand better in context, the readings. The readings are usually uh, of uh, between 20 to 30 lines, uh, maybe two or three paragraphs. And uh, you always have a structure of uh, the, the summary or the concept of the reading in the first paragraph the body of the most important information is in the body, and just some conclusions in the last two or three lines. If you are taking <clears throat> also the, the TOEFL IBT, you're definitely gonna have an essay. If you're familiar with writing essays, uh, thesis statement, topic sentences, uh, conclusions, writing a draft, pre-writing, you may be ready to make an essay in 30 minutes. So you have to know a little bit about academic writing, which has this structure, yes? Uh, introduction, body, and conclusion, okay? And then you have to know what kind of uh, writings you, uh, you have to know. If, if it's a narrative, if it's a comparative, if it's a contrast kind of paragraph, you have to be familiar with that. So, um, so over here, how much should I get? This is very important. I don't know if you could see the first, second, third, fourth, the fifth column, which is the CE. FR, which is the, the, the common, um, the European frame, uh, framework uh, for scores. Usually letter A is a beginner level, B is intermediate, and C is advanced. So when you take the TOEFL, the TOEFL test, many universities ask for an undergraduate, for an undergraduate level. They usually ask for a B2 or C1 level. So that means that they will ask this range of a score between 65 to 78 or between 79 and 95. It's not, a, it's not a precise number for all the US universities. Each university chooses the exact number that they want for, uh, for entrance scores. So you might find, for example, that um, our university, for example, is, uh, asked for 75. So that's pretty. Eh, that's a pretty decent level to start as an international student with a TOEFL IBT test. So uh, that would be with TOEFL IBT. Then you have the equivalence with a computer base. And then this is the TOEFL ITP. And the TOEFL ITP, um, for example, uh, for undergraduate, uh, our school even asked for 450. So it's pretty much like a B1 level. But for a graduate program, you, they start with 550 and up. 550, 600. So again, like I said at the beginning, you have to be an intermediate, upper intermediate student to kind of have at least the minimum uh, what they require, right? If you're upper intermediate, that would be considered B2. So an advanced, that would be a C1. So that's why I highlighted this uh, scores because it's not a precise number, okay? So 
again, if you take the, if you take the test on your own, if you take the test in your home country, you may have you may use this chart to have a better reference to have a better reference uh, of what you need or, or whatever you need to to uh, improve, because TOEFL is going to give you a scores by skills. When you finish the TOEFL test, they are going to give you okay, you had um, you had sixty one in listening you had 79 in written and, and, and written the written expression and you had 40 in reading so now you know if you, if, if you got 40 you know that it's a uh, beginner level and that's what you need to improve so something very important i don't know if you can see the last last column which is the toefl waiver and what's that you can find universities that uh, they they take the toefl but if you do not, if you take their, their English program and you pass the English program, not the TOEFL test, but if you get a good score in the English program in the U.S., in a U.S. school, they can waive the TOEFL. What is waiving? Which it means like they would not consider your TOEFL score and they would just, just consider your, your ESL score. And that's, for example, what we have. You register in our English program, you take the TOEFL, but if you don't pass the TOEFL, you still have a chance to have a good grade in our English program. And if you have a good grade, like highlighted there, if you get between 110 and 119, for example, you may be admitted to our undergraduate program. So here, a good tip, try to find schools that have a TOEFL waiver. If they don't, don't worry, but not all the US schools have a TOEFL waiver, okay? So but that's, that's pretty much an advantage for a lot of students. If you come to our school, you will find that, uh, just in case. <clears throat> all right, so, um, so that's about TOEFL, about uh, the requirements that they usually ask. When you apply to a university, when you apply to a US university, uh, you know that TOEFL it's uh, it one of the requirements in some schools like for example in our school if you don't have a TOEFL you can also have an IELTS test so try to find or try to ask the admission school if they are asking for TOEFL or IELTS or just one of them okay so that's but that's usually one of the uh, mandatory requirements of a U.S. school because that determines your English level what else do the, uh, what else the US schools usually ask they usually ask for a, an essay yes an academic essay or that, that's what they call college entrance essay um, they usually ask for a couple of letters of recommendation letters from your teachers letters from a teacher you have in university in school in high school they usually ask for transcripts right high school transcripts if you are transferring, if you already have some years in Bosnia studying university, but you haven't finished and you want to transfer, you're gonna be asked to have transfer credits. So you finish your program, you don't finish in your home country, but you finish in the US. So that's transfer credits. They, some universities accept 60 to 80% of credits of whatever you study in your home country usually. And, uh, and there are other, of course, there are other documents that they usually ask, right? High school transcripts, uh, they ask for SAT, they ask for GRE if it's graduate, they ask for application fees, all, all, the, all the money money part, right? The tuition fee, the student fees, the books, right? But, but that's pretty much um, additionals, right? <clears throat> and of course, the most important, if you come to the U.S., the most important is your visa, right? Which is going to be especially the F1 visa, which is the student visa, all right? Some students come with J1, but, uh, but they will need to transfer that or, or change status to J to F1. So let me, let me tell you about uh, the TOEFL test, about the, uh, the listening part, which is what a lot of students ask me about. Um, you have to be familiar with directions. Uh, there are a lot of free, free websites that prepare you for TOEFL. So uh, you, can, you, can, you can find there are a lot of them. So you can be familiar with the directions. Some students may get distracted with the directions and they may not listen or understand what the directions are about. So the directions tell you how to answer 
the questions. So some students may think they assume they know how to answer a test, but when it comes to the test, they sometimes they answer incorrectly. There's something very peculiar about, about TOEFL, which is there are no penalties or no um, an answer or against the, your score. So, if, so my recommendation, answer all your questions. If you didn't understand the question, don't worry, answer it, because you're not gonna have any point against your score, okay? So if, you're, if the listening was too difficult, uh, go for it, right? <laughs> go for it, flip your coin, and answer, <laughs> answer the question, all right? Because there are no penalties, all right? And that's, that's a good thing. The other types of tests, sometimes you have points against. There you go. So um, over here we have some tips that our teachers usually give to um, for a listening part. Uh, sometimes this is not one hundred percent, but sometimes I would say probably eighty percent or ninety percent. The the answer is in the second line of the conversation. So if you lost or attention of the first part of the listening, try to focus on the second part or the second person that starts talking, okay? Usually, there, the answer is there, usually. So that's one, one tip for listening. And, and what else? Usually the questions of, from listening, they ask a grammar question. So you listen to a conversation, but the question is about grammar, or, or you have to know some grammar topics. So you may have a conversation, but maybe the question is, uh, um, where is the test taken? If you know passive voices, you will understand that question. Where is the test taken? So if you know passive voice, you will, you will, you will find the answer because you know passives. And usually TOEFL, in the listening part, they ask you about passives, they ask you about negatives, which is usually using seldom, never, hardly ever. And they usually use wishes or conditionals, questions with if. Maybe at the end of the conversation, you will hear what would have happened if the lady hadn't gone, all right? If you know about conditionals, you will understand the question. So try to make sure you study conditionals and wishes in grammar. Uh, try to um, try to be ready with uh, uh, this is the, the models uncertainty suggestions like should would may might those are typical types of questions it comes in the listening part like for example what should the men do maybe the conversation is oh I'm having problems with my computer oh why don't you go why don't you go to the uh, to my friend my friend can can fix it for you and then the question says what should the men do? And then you will have the answers there as suggestions. So you have to know how to use should and also uh, past models, should have. What should have, where, where should have the men gone? Yes, past models. So be careful with uh, suggestions as well. And also phrasal verbs. Well, phrasal verbs, I'm not gonna give you any tip because that's probably the most difficult thing to learn in English, right? Sometimes you may have the question and say, um, who should he look for? So if you don't know the phrase over look for, which is different from look, you may not know. So be ready with phrasal verbs, at least as much as you can. What are phrasal verbs? Maybe you don't remember. Get by, get on, get up, get down, get away. Do you know the differences? So that, that's phrasal verse, right? And then idioms. Sometimes um, idioms come, like uh, first come, first serve. What is that? Or um, I don't know, it's raining, it's, it's raining dogs and cats. What is raining dogs and cats? And, and you will have the answers there, right? Raining cats and dogs, it's like raining a lot, right? So you have to know about idioms, yes? So be ready with that. That's for listening. Um, so. Usually my, my students may say after a listening question, I didn't understand the conversation teacher. I tried, I, I, I got concentrated on it. So um, these are suggestions, these are tips that uh, 
come from a book we use. I don't know if you, if you want to find the book, but it's over there in the slide. Longman Preparation Course for the TOEFL Test. This is the book we use in our classes, and they have these kind of suggestions, all right? So these are not my opinions. These are suggestions that come from the same TOEFL preparation book. All right, let's see. So um, work with re-statements. Do, do you know what re-statements are? Re-statements, it's another way to say a sentence. It's like re-saying, reformulating a word or an idea. So sometimes the listening part, um, it's just restating what it was in the conversation. So try to find an idea that uh, duplicates that it looks like the conversation. Um, then um, over here it says, answer, answer that sounds the most different from what you hear. Sometimes the answer are words that uh, are just the antonyms of what you heard. If in the conversation you heard, I don't know, big, maybe the answer would be small. Why? Because sometimes the question asks you for the opposite. Maybe you have the question, what shouldn't the men do? All right, so it would be probably the opposite. Um, so over here you have other, other tips. Never answer because something sounds like similar to you or uh, and also try to focus on the second line of the conversation as i said before okay these are some tips of course there are hundreds of tips for listening but as i told you 12 seconds so you have to answer in 12 seconds so you try to practice with your cell phone with a timer so you so you are trained to answer questions in 12 seconds remember you are not allowed to take notes you are not allowed to take notes in the listening part. So if you think you're, you're going to be with your pencil or your pen taking notes, that is not allowed. Okay? You have to answer very quickly. All right. Okay, you guys. All right. Don't get scared. Huh? Don't get scared. It, it, it's, <laughs> I know it, it sounds a difficult test, but uh, it, it, some students try twice, three times before, before they get the score. So don't worry. Uh, over here... It's about structure and written expression. This is what usually comes. You have to be familiar with subject and verb, especially the conjugation. That's usually, it, it looks easy, but in the TOEFL test, it comes with uh, a lot of tricks. Yes, so for example, a positives. A positive is something that usually comes with it. And over here, look at that. It says blank, coma, George, blank, is attending the lecture, right? What are the options? Right now, happily, because of the time, and my friend. I don't know. Does anybody want to participate? Does anybody want to tell me what the answer could be? Just for fun. I don't know. Somebody wants to give it a try? Or maybe in the chat, you want to write the answer in the chat? What would be the answer, you guys? I don't know if some, is everybody muted? I don't know. Uh, everyone is muted, but you can unmute oh. yourself uh, if you would like to, or if it's easier for you, type in the chat box what you think the, the right chat. answer would be. All right. Anyway, okay, oh, we have C. We, okay. Okay. We have C. Because of the time. A. Oh, all right. Letter A. Okay, there you go. Uh -huh. Letter A. We oh, have D. A. Oh, wow. We have different opinions. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Okay. Okay, pretty fair. Let's see. So, oh, there you go. All right. If you if you thought it was letter D, that's also good. If you can you can feel good about yourself. So, uh, this is a positives. All right. Uh, which usually the positives are the words that are in between commas, which usually refer to the main subject. This is very common in a TOEFL test. Of course, this is a very simple sentence, but usually in TOEFL, this kind of question comes like in two lines, very long sentences with one a positive. So be careful with a positive. If you have never studied a positives in your English class, try to find that in books or, or online, okay? Or come to New York and learn with us, <laughs> all right? There you go. Okay, so that's what, that's what it usually uh, a positives are, right? The verb doesn't belong to what exact, exactly in, in comas. It's usually what it's 
in the main subject. Okay, that's what a positive are. This is very common all the time. I see it all the time. Um, we usually have four TOEFL tests every year here in our school. And I always look at the test and I always find this type of questions. So uh, these are other, other topics that usually come in the grammar, what, it, what it's called grammar. Um, present participles, past participles, take, taking, right? Go, going, gone. Uh, so also past participles and present participles as subject. Uh, not I am going to the pool, but as, as a noun. So like going to the pool is fun, right? Going is not working as a verb, but is working as a subject. So that, that kind uh, of question you may find with participles. Then this is very easy, but in the exam, sometimes the question is about uh, connectors and, but, that, what, which, and uh, if you know connectors in a, especially in clauses, in complex clauses, if you know how to use connectors, you will find the good answer. Why? Because you have to know what is similar to and. Additionally, uh, I don't know, si uh, formal synonyms of and, formal synonyms of but, like however, right? And uh, I don't know, like um, other expressions, furthermore, right? Um, so those types of expressions you have to be familiar with. Um, then reduce clauses. This is. Uh, one hundred percent sure you're going to have that type of question. Reduce clauses, you see. Um, so let me see. Or inverted subject. Look at my example. She never works on Fridays, right? She never works on Fridays. What is the inverted subject? Never does she work on Friday. This is very typical that it comes in the TOEFL test. So you have to be familiar how to use inverted subject with hardly, hardly ever, rarely, scarcely, seldom, neither, no, nor, barely, all of those, okay? So, or <clears throat> either also, neither or neither, or either or either, you have to be familiar with what, what happens when they start the sentence, all right? Over here, I'm giving you an example of the reduced clause, you see? The woman who is waving to us, and what happens with the reduced clause? You just take out the connector who and, this, and the verb, all right? And then we have waving, which becomes um, not, not the present continuous form of the subject, right? So be careful if, uh, if you haven't studied reduced clauses because that's really typical in a question. All right, let me, let me go a little, a little fa farther and faster. These are usually um, topics also in a TOEFL test. Uh, subject verb agreement, that's the conjugation. If it's, uh, if it's singular or plural, if it's you or we or he or she. Um, then parallel structure, like I like going to the movies, taking, uh, taking walks and working on weekends, right? The same verbs, the same way, right? Then comparative, superlatives, bigger than, the biggest, the best, better than. Conditionals, like, like I said, if, if, and whether, and wish, right? And the inverted conditionals, right? The inverted conditionals. I don't know if you ever heard about inverted conditional, but that's very typical also. What is the, what is the third conditional? If I had gone to the movies, I would have had fun. Right, that's the typical if clause. What is the inverted conditional? If I had gone to the movies, what is inverted? Had I gone, had I gone to the movies, I would have had fun. That's the inverted conditional in an if clause. You have to be very familiar with the third conditional, but inverted third condition, all right? So those are other, other topics, right? I already said passives and possessives. This, this is usually in the test. The reading, the reading is, uh, is really heavy. Sometimes topics that we have never seen in English books. I said that usually topics are biology, chemistry, um, physics, sometimes physics, um, 
uh, about astronauts, right? About dinosaurs, about history. And those are very heavy topics, very dense topics. So what does TOEFL uh, um, uh, give us uh, suggestions? One is to skim the passage. So that's the first suggestion. Do not read through. Do not read word by word. Skim the passage. And what is a skimming? <clears throat> if you are an advanced ESL student, maybe if you have, if you study academic writing, maybe you know the difference between read and skim or a scan, right? Which are different uh, ways of reading. If you skim, it's like if you go very quickly over some words, but you are not reading sentence by sentence. So you're reading, try to focus and just read nouns, maybe adjectives, try to read verbs, do not read prepositions, do not read connectors. So that's the way you can skim. So you should be able to skim in four or five seconds, the whole reading. So try to, try to skim. That's gonna give you a, a good first idea of the reading without reading too much, all right? And then, and then go immediately to the questions, get the idea, get the question. Usually the first question of the reading is what the main idea of the paragraph. So, um, and then you will, you will find other detailed questions which will ask you for synonyms. They will ask you for similar verbs and not too much about the reading itself sometimes. Sometimes the reading question is asking you, in line 15, what does outrageous mean? So you, will, you, you need to be careful with vocabulary. You, have to, you would have to know what outrageous means, all right? And maybe you don't understand the reading. Maybe you understood the reading, but if you didn't understand that word, that word is just about vocabulary. So try to find keywords, okay, in the reading. That's why maybe adjectives, verbs, and nouns. Maybe phrases, maybe small phrases, all right? And uh, so sometimes the question just focus on the question, yeah, on vocabulary. They, they, fo they focus, sorry, on vocabulary. So um, try to be familiar uh, reading past TOEFL tests so you can be familiar with vocabulary, technical vocabulary of other topics, all right? Uh, then this is a little more general, but usually the readings, they give you supporting examples. They give you, there are readings where they only give you reasons, okay? There are other readings that are problem and the consequences. Those are effects and causes. So <clears throat> the questions will be about that. What, what the consequences of this situation. Or sometimes the readings are about opposite ideas. So try to figure it out what the reading, how the reading is structured, okay? So maybe they give you an idea about Republicans and Democrats, maybe about this type of construction and construction A and construction B. So sometimes the readings about, are about opposite ideas as well, okay? All right, um, let me see. I don't know if, oops. okay, let me, let me see. I, I don't know if there's uh, uh, somebody asking something in the chat. Let me, let me, let me, let me go back, all right? Uh, there you go. There's somebody asking, right? So yeah, you, you, can, you can go ahead. Somebody raised his hand? No, okay. okay. Maybe you have to unmute yourself. Let me find somebody in the chat asking. Oh, okay. If somebody. there are questions, uh, you can unmute yourself and ask maybe now. Uh, if, or if you feel more comfortable, write it in the chat. I will read it without mentioning your name and um, Gonzalo will answer it. So uh, do we have questions? Or do you have any questions about TOEFL for Gonzalo or to preparing for TOEFL? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> no uh, problem. No yeah. Problem. <laughs> so just to, just just to, just to finish. Um, so if, if you want to find a TOEFL course, a TOEFL preparation course, uh, if if it's in your home country or here in the U.S., 
doesn't matter. Um, try to find a course that uh, gives you a lot of practice tests, right? We usually recycle, yes, uh, past exams and we practice with that. Uh, that gives you a lot of training, especially because, for example, our teachers prepare our students with, with timer. Okay, you guys, you have 50 questions for grammar the next day. Okay, now you have 40 minutes for grammar. Okay, and the following week, we're going to have 20 minutes for grammar. That's a good way to practice. If you want to practice yourself, that's also a good way to practice if you time yourself. Um, try to refresh some grammar, some vocabulary um, topics, the topics I mentioned, for example, if you're not familiar, or sometimes a lot of people say, yeah, I, in grammar, I hate, I hate phrasal verbs. I never remember phrasal verbs. Okay, so try to work on phrasal verbs and uh, try to find games about phrasal verbs so you can remember in a good way. Um, listening, a lot of, uh, most of the scores in, in, in TOEFL, the lowest scores are, are usually in listening. I don't know why, but listening is usually what, the most difficult part. I don't know if it's the, because it's the first part, sometimes it's the audio, sometimes it's your headphone, sometimes it's because you are not paying attention because it's the first part of the test. But how do you practice listening? I'm not gonna tell you the typical phrase, watch TV, because that doesn't help if you don't have a, a, a focus behind it. If you don't, if, I'm not gonna tell you watch a movie. If you're not watching a movie with, w without, without sub, uh, subtitles, and you're trying to focus on learning dense vocabulary, then you are just wasting your time. If you're just watching a movie, that's probably not gonna help you for TOEFL vocabulary, right? Unless you're watching a, I don't know, uh, uh, NCN documentary probably, you probably will, you will hear uh, very dense vocabulary. But uh, podcasts, podcasts are a good way uh, to learn, to practice vocabulary, to, to get, the exact pronunciation of how it is pronounced one word in Texas, different from California, different from New York, right? Uh, here in New York, a lot of, a lot of natives have Italian uh, accent. So, so, but in Texas, it's different. So be, be familiar with different types of, of listening accents, right? Um, and then <clears throat> try to, uh, I know this is difficult, but uh, try to make yourself some time uh, to to practice to practice TOEFL. TOEFL doesn't require uh, maybe maybe one hour one hour a day at least. That that would help. Um, and then let me see. This is what we usually have in in the U.S. in our program. Um, our students. This is what they pay online and also on campus. Um, if they just take a TOEFL test on, online, uh, sorry, a TOEFL class online, that, that's what they would pay. But this is what we usually um, have here in New York in our CUNY schools. This is pretty much the U.S. dollars, um, uh, what the, the students may, may pay for an entire program, which includes reading, writing, conversation, grammar. But if you only want TOEFL, this is pretty much uh, the cost of a course for TOEFL. Um, <clears throat> but again, you may find, you may find some uh, free TOEFL um, materials online. Um, somebody's asking, is there a certain amount of times one can take a TOEFL test? Yes, you can take the TOEFL time one million times. No problem, there, there is no restriction about how many times you can take TOEFL, but usually your TOEFL, the official TOEFL score, TOEFL ITP and TOEFL IBT, usually is valid for two years. Many, many U.S. colleges accept a TOEFL test score if it's no, not more than two years. Some schools may be a little more flexible. Some schools may be a little more strict, right? They may tell you, no, it has to be one year old. But some, some other schools may be flexible. But usually, two years, it's what it's called valid, all right? We, we usually uh, accept two years old. This is our contacts. If you want to contact us, it would be great to have students from Bosnia, from Herzegovina here in New York. Um, it would be great. I don't know, uh, Anya, if you ever send students to New York, uh, but it would be great if you can help 
the, atten the attendees today, it would be great to help. But this is our contact. If they want to contact us directly, we can, of course, help them. And, uh, and this is our social media. If you want to uh, find material, we are on, like everybody, right? On Facebook, on Instagram. I don't know what you like or Twitter or LinkedIn. Uh, we have podcasts also, Google, uh, Apple, and Spotify. So this is our social media to, so you can contact us through uh, not only the website, but also over here. So thank you very much. Uh, unless there are some other questions, I'll be very happy to, to answer to anybody. Thank you so much, Gonzalo. Uh, to students that might be interested in LE, please feel free to reach out to closest education in the state center to you. There is uh, our center in Mostar, Tuzla, Banyaluka, and Sarajevo. You can reach your specific centers via email, Mostar at educationusa.org for Mostar region, uh, Tuzla, Tuzla at educationusa, Banyaluka, Banyaluka at educationusa and Sarajevo, Sarajevo at educationusa.org. Now, we have a question, Gonzalo, can they get this presentation? Uh, this webinar oh. will be filmed, I just want to mention, but uh, uh, is there a possibility can, to get the presentation? I can send it uh, over here in the chat. Okay, great. Uh, so Gonzalo will send it in the chat, or also if it's easier, Gonzalo, you can send it to me and then I can uh, send it via email too to everyone. So yes, it is possible. Um, sure. And there you go. I sent it to the chat, so okay. feel free to use it. I mean, it's, it's okay. No problem. Uh, if you are preparing for TOEFL, there is many useful online resources. As Gonzalo mentioned, uh, you can use, I, I saw that Ailey has podcasts, so podcasts are always good for, for listening, as mentioned. Uh, you can also reach out to your Education USA centers. We can give you a practice test for free, online practice tests. Uh, there are a couple of courses. There are uh, we can we can give you websites where you can practice test questions for free. So feel free to reach out to the closest Education USA center uh, to you. If there are if there are any questions, feel free to ask. Okay. Uh, somebody's asking, like, is there a possibility to take the test without taking the course? Yes, of course. Yeah, you can take the test directly. If you feel, yes. if you feel ready, go for it. Go for it. I mean, to be honest, the first, I'm not a native English speaker. So uh, the first time when I was 16, I didn't take, I didn't take the, I didn't take any course. And so I just took the test directly. So uh, yeah, you can take the test without the course. Yes, it is possible to take with without the course, but you need to prepare either way. It sure. is completely uh, your your option. Do you wanna uh, take it with co Do you wanna go through course to prepare for TOEFL, or do you wanna uh, do it on your own? Now we have a question about costs uh, of a TOEFL test in Bosnia and Herzegovina. TOEFL costs hundred and ninety five dollars. That's the test fee. Now, the TOEFL, as Gonzalo mentioned, has switched completely online, so you can take it from safety of your home. You don't have to go to the test center, uh, but you will have to do it with Proctor, meaning there is a person <coughs> watching what you're doing and how you're answering. Um, with that in mind, I think the price probably is the same, but should be checked. You can check the price the dates of the of the te when you can take TOEFL and uh, practice tests and everything on their official website ets.org. Um, and if anyone has problems, do let me know. I can send you the link. Yeah, here in New York, the authorized centers. Um, the last time I checked, they were two hundred dollars. So, but for example, if you take our course. And the TOEFL ITP test is free, but only if you take if you take and pay for the course for the TOEFL course. So yes, um, it depends. In it some in some countries, maybe around 180, 190, or two hundred. Yeah. Uh, uh, somebody's asking if colleges waive proficiency test if you had upper intermediate English for two years in high school. Um, 
I, I don't, I don't know. That would depend on the school. Mm -hmm. I would say, I would say usually they, they, they require uh, TOEFL or IELTS or maybe um, Cambridge some, but I don't know about coming from your school. Uh, so it really depends if your high school is, has academic program in English language, for example, if it's IB school, then it might be waived for you, might be. You need to check with the school you're interested in. If you're coming from public high school, Gimnazija ili neka od drugih srednjih škola u Bosni i Hercegovini. So if you're coming from gymnasium or some other public high schools from our educational system, no matter how many English courses you have taken over the years in within the school, uh, it's you will still have to take TOEFL. So it really depends uh, depends uh, what what school you're interested in the states and what school you're attending currently and just for everyone i'm going to post a link in the chat now of the website i just mentioned where you can check the prices and the dates for toefl are there any more questions <laughs> well, if there are no more questions, uh, if you get a question later on, maybe today, maybe you know later on today or tomorrow, feel free to send a question to me and I will share it with Gonzalo to help answer your questions. Uh, if there are no more questions, again, thank you who, everyone for joining today's webinar. Thank you so much, Gonzalo, for hosting this. It's been truly wonderful, very detailed, great presentation. Uh, hopefully, recording is good <laughs> and we'll be able to upload it to YouTube. Uh, that, yeah. that would be all for today. Thank you again and uh, we'll see you on the next webinar. Thank you. Bye-bye.